So today I'm going to give you five reasons why DJI Air 2S is the best drone out there on the market for most people. Now if you're new here, this isn't the kind of content that I normally make. I normally make travel guides, hotel and food reviews and etc. By the way, make sure to subscribe down below to stay tuned. But whether you know it or not, drones are used in a lot of my content. Like 95% of my videos include drone shots, so I have tons of experience and I've been flying them for a long time. Here are the three drones that I've used a lot in some of my content. Here are the drones, oh, pow, break it. Now primarily I use the DJI system and of course I'm used to it, right? I have my Air 2S right here that comes with me everywhere. I also have the FPV drone uh, and the new addition to the fleet, the DJI Avada. This little guy right here also comes with me. Well, has been coming with me in the last few weeks, a lot of places. Of course, we'll talk about that later. But the idea is that I've been flying all these drones, even the Mavic 3, I have a friend who has one, so I've flown it and have a lot of experience with it. So really after all of that, I still prefer the Air 2S because it's the best all around drone in my experience. So let's talk about the five reasons why I think it's the best, right? Number one is the form factor. This guy right here is not too big and not too small. So if you take a look at it, it can fit into my hand, right? And I have pretty big hands. So consider that, but it does fit into, into my hands nice and easy. In fact, comparing it next to like the 28 to 70 Tamron lens right here, it's really not that much bigger, right? So if you look at it, I can pretty much fit it into my book bag. I can fit it into my carry-on. I can bring it with me. It could go into a purse. It can go anywhere. It's really not that big. But at the same time, it's big enough once extended to withstand winds of like 20 and 25 miles an hour. Like I said, I've flown this thing everywhere. Cruise ships, in the hot, in the cold. And I regularly fly in the 20 to 25 mile an hour winds. And I'm telling you, it has extremely stable footage. It really doesn't matter whether it's cold, whether it's hot, whether the winds are high or low. This thing produces smooth, beautiful footage pretty much any time. Now, yeah, obviously, if you have a tornado or there's a really high winds and etc., you shouldn't be flying it, right? You shouldn't be flying it when it's raining and, it, and all of those things. But generally speaking, uh, there hasn't been one situation where this drone hasn't done what I asked it to do. And most of the time, the footage is great. It's steady, it's beautiful, this drone does the job. And like I said, packs right into your book bag so you can bring it with you anywhere. So that to me kind of makes it better than the Mini 3, right? The Mini 3 doesn't have as good quality as this drone in my opinion, although I know the 10 bit and the upgrades and etc. But it's also small. And that's the issue here. Being small, it does not, it can't fly in high enough winds. It can't fly in situations that this guy can't fly in. And it's small enough to go anywhere. And that's one of the reasons why I think this guy is better than the Mini 3, right? It can handle higher winds and can still be small enough to travel with you. It's not as small as the Mini 3, but it gives you best of both worlds. Next, let's talk camera. Number two reason why I love this drone over any other is the amazing camera on it, right? It has a great sensor, 10-bit color, fantastic dynamic range. The color grades really well and allows you to stretch the image and post to almost unbelievable levels. Like I really love it. You can turn this thing to fully automatic and just shoot your videos and pictures and be fine with it and be totally happy and everything is great. Or you can turn this to manual, completely manual settings, go into D-Log and then later on in post, you know, bring it back to Rec. 709 and then color grade 
to your imagination's end, really. It, it's fantastic and it really allows you to do a lot in post. I absolutely love the way this drone color grades. It's super epic. It just one of my favorite things. I mean, I'm sure that the Mavic 3 Cine is probably better with the pro grade and etc. But at the end of the day, that drone is $4,000 more than this one. You know, and this one does a re almost, I mean, I'm, I, I know, I know. I'm gonna say almost, but for most people, nothing. You don't, you don't need this any. You don't need the Mavic 3. For most people, this is way more than enough. You can use this for even professional settings, in my opinion. So prosumers and pros could probably use the DJI r The camera on this is great. It also takes awesome photos and even great hyperlapses. There has a lot of automated functions in this. There are some automated flight modes that will allow you to get professional shots without you even having to fly the drone. It does the master shots, it does the hyperlapses. It's really amazing. So it, you can do a lot with this drone, professionally even. Next, let's talk durability and usability, right? This drone is really fast in sport mode, so it can fly really well. In fact, it's faster in sport mode than the Avada. I'm not kidding you. The Avada, probably like 27, 28, but it also depends on the wind conditions, how high you're flying it. Yeah, this guy will zip faster closer to the ground. But once the winds pick up, once whatever, and you need to like zip straight through, I think this guy is actually faster. I feel, I fly both of these, and I feel like the Avada, even in sport mode, cannot go like past 24, 25 miles an hour, while this guy, I regularly fly him in sport mode at like 32. Next, let's talk durability. This drone is actually quite durable. I'm not kidding you. I mean, I'm not saying you can beat it up, so take that with a grain of salt, but I have flown into a tree like with leaves and etc., and it actually still stayed up. You can see like the little chop here, the leaves. In fact, some of the green stuff is still on this, but it totally stayed up. Now, I obviously don't think it can take a crash or whatever else, but technically speaking, so far, knock on wood, dropping it or even flying it into a tree or two, just really kind of beating it up. And so far it's been just holding strong. It's, I mean, it's not like the Avada, right? It's a different video, we'll talk about that later. But the Avada has guards, right? And I've actually flown this thing straight into a tree and look at it, still works. But anyway, that's a different video. So the point is, this is actually a pretty reliable and durable drone for, for a GPS one. It's, it's quite fantastic. Another thing, of course, this drone can fly in automated functions, right? There's so many automatic AI modes in this. Like I was saying before, the master shots, the drone shots, it can do automatic hyperlapses, time lapses, so much stuff. This thing is packed with lots of AI stuff. So if you want to get really smooth footage, if you'd like the drone to do some of the work for you, I mean, sometimes it's nice. Most of the time I fly manual, but with time lapses, or things like that, or if you're trying to do a master shot or two, or you're trying to film something and you need to get it up there, the drone will do the job for you, and the automatic functions in it are absolutely fantastic. It's been out for a while as well, so there's no bugs, there are no issues, everything is just cleaned out and beautiful. It just works. It has an FPV mode in it as well. I mean, it's not like the FPV will allow you to fly like an FPV and dive down and do crazy things, but it does like move the gimbal around to give you the look like an FPV. So you can achieve FPV-ish, I would say. That's the best way I can put it. Look with this, so again, more flexibility to get more content out of this drone. That's really nice. It can be flown with the regular controller or the RC Pro controller that's offered with some of the packages and etc which is really nice also. And last but not least, and my favorite, is the battery on this drone. The batteries are actually kind of good. This provides you like 25-ish maybe minutes of flight, depending on what kind of mode you're using and etc. which is really good. I'm not saying it's like the Mavic 3, but to be honest with you, most, I have five batteries. I bought five batteries for these drones, and most of the time, I don't really need more than like two or three. So realistically speaking, after like flying and getting all the fun out of it, after like you get everything, you know, you, you fly around, because when you first get this drone, you're gonna spend like hours and hours flying it, right? But once you figure it out and get all the control and you're like, okay, I need to use this drone for a specific situation, you don't really need that much of batteries. You know what you need to do. You get up there, you fly, you get your shots and you come down. Usually one battery is good enough for me. Sometimes I can take two or three batteries extra. You know, the only times that I have issues with this drone, to be honest with you, 
uh, as far as the batteries go, is when I'm trying to do like really long hyperlapses. That's one of the negatives about this drone. I'd say there are no extended batteries. It's just one type of battery right here. It's this guy. This battery right here. This is the only uh, battery that you can get for this drone. It's not like the Mini 3, which allows you to get some extended batteries. And the issue with this is, like if I'm flying the drone and I'm trying to do hyperlapses, a lot of the times, the hyperlapses require a lot of time in flight because you gotta take like a lot of pictures. With this drone, I can't do really more than like a 12 second hyperlapse. It's about 150 pictures is the most that I can do uh, until the battery runs out. Normally, I like to do much longer hyperlapses with my cameras, so I would love to get a drone that can actually be able to maybe pull out like a 30 second hyperlapse, which of course, would require like 900 photos, which <laughs> this is a long, long way away from that. But all in all, the battery is fantastic and it'll definitely do the job for you. Bring a couple and then you're good to go. Number four is the price, right? This drone is $999. You can get the Fly More combo for $1299. And if a $1499, you can get the RC Pro controller, which by the way, is actually a cool idea because that controller itself is like $1,000. But all in all, for $999, if you wanted to, you could fly with this thing, which is actually kind of nice. It's competitively priced. Like it's not like the Mavic 3, which I think starts at 2000. So this guy right here is 999 and then for 1299, you can have the fly more combo, which gives you two more batteries. You definitely want to do that. The Mavic 3 by comparison starts at $2,000 and the fly more is like $3,000. So $1299 versus $3,000, that's the difference between the Air 2S and the Mavic 3. And how much more are you getting for the Mavic 3? I mean, yes, it has some professional functions in it. Yeah, it's a lot more steady, it has a better battery, it has a better camera, this is all of those things. And if you want to grade for the Pro grade, you'd have to spend $5,000 because the Cine version allows you to do that with an SSD and so much more. It's all great, but realistically, even me being a YouTuber, doing a lot of the stuff that I've been doing, I never really needed any of that. This is why I don't have the Mavic 3 or the Mavic 3 Cine. But besides the fact that I don't have $5,000 to spend on a drone, this guy does the job for me. All of the videos you see, everything you've seen has been shot with this guy right here because he's good enough, right? So why would I spend more? I mean, I don't see a reason. Now, if you're a professional and you want the best of the best of the best, you're shooting like movies or you're trying to do some crazy stuff like that you know you have a business or things like that maybe or if you have the money and you say whatever i just want the best of the best the mavic 3 or the mavic 3 cine is definitely the best of the best but it does cost you a lot of money between three and five thousand dollars so at the end of the day the mavic 3 or the cine are really out of reach for most people and this is why i don't think it's the best all-around drone for anybody because 90 percent of the people if not more are not going to be able to afford it or need all the functions that come in the mavic 3. So again win to the air 2s now the fpv drones they're cool drones they have a specific function again not for everybody but they'll cost about the same as the air 2s and then last but not least there is the mini version right Right, the DJI Mini 3, which starts at $900, but realistically, the only reason I would think you would want to get one of those over this if you're looking for an image is maybe the size or the sub 249 category, the gram thing that allows it to be small. But all in all, if you don't care about the small and there are no restrictions in your countries, the Air 2S wins every time of the Mini 3, in my opinion, just because of the stability and being able to fly in high winds and all kinds of crazy situations. But that's kind of what it is. The price is really good on this thing. And last but not least is the ease of use. The reason this drone is the best is because it's the best all around. It does everything for you and it's really, really easy to use it. It works every time. There are no bugs. There are no issues. It, it's been all worked out and it's just perfect. So because of that, I feel like it can be picked up by a professional or someone who is just starting to fly drones and you're gonna be able to use it. So that's what's great about it. Whether you've been flying drones for years, you can get and squeeze the most out of it by doing the color grading, shooting it in D-Log, getting all the best out of the manual settings, or you could be a new drone pilot and you just get this thing and you put it all in automatic, learn how to fly and get up there and do your stuff. Remember, it has all of the 
the sensors, right? Except for, of course, side to side. It has sensors up and down, and it has sensors front and back, so it's gonna allow you in regular mode not to fly into things. There are a lot of uh, user-friendly functions for this drone that will help new users as well, but at the same time, it offers all of the professional functions that you would need if you wanted to shoot YouTube or even some prosumer type of situations. If you wanna do like real estate and all that, this drone is perfect for that. It does it all. As always, I would love to hear what you think about this down below. Let me know if you've flown the DJI r 2 the Mavic 3, the Mini, which one is your favorite? Do you think I'm full of it? Do you agree with me? I'd love to hear down below. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.